not just critics that we're going to be exposing tonight that are the most violent and the most uh, fluent of criticisms against myself. Our special guest tonight is Barbara Hartwell. Sherry and Barbara have been in contact now for several weeks and that the information we're going to be relaying tonight, I suppose most of it has to do with Barbara's long time struggle against these forces of darkness that have attacked myself. How Sherry and I got into this, actually I can thank Sherry probably for my life at this point, because it was back in 2007 that I published the book Love, The Real Da Vinci Code. In that book, which has the real Da Vinci Code in it, and in my opinion and the opinion of lots of people worldwide who are advancing the 528 Love Revolution, the knowledge that is in this book that has been confirmed by the world's leading mathematicians and physicists that say that Horowitz is right, that the core creator frequency, certainly celebrated by all the botanical world and nature, is 528 hertz frequency or nanometers of light. It's the heart of virtually everything in a musical mathematical matrix that can set humanity free, just like Tesla said, if humanity only knew the power of the three sixes and nines, it would be a completely different universe. Likewise, 528 is a six. It's called the Miracle Six. In music, it's called MI6. If you're in British Secret Service, that's how they got their name. And if you understand miracles and the miracle of love is a energy of spirituality, a blessing that can set humanity free. In essence, this is why John Lennon was assassinated, persecuted first, and then assassinated, because all he wanted to do was preach love and not be falling victim to the victims that, uh, or to, to the actually to the victims of Satanism that we're going to be talking about tonight, and the people who enslave all of us with insanity, lunacy, hypocrisy. The COINTEL Pro CIA FBI agent provocateurs who utilize some very interesting techniques we're going to be uncovering and discussing tonight. And that that is essentially the truth, the greatest truth to, to help us get beyond the deception, the illusion, and lift the veil of satanic sorcery that has kept humanity enslaved. And, and I just also want to point out that there are certain people that have sent emails and said things about me stating that, you know, uh, that I'm responsible for all the stuff that's happened as far as the dark side coming at you. That's not the case at all. If, matter of fact, I never met Sherry Kane until 2009, and it was in 2007 that a Knights of Malta list was forged by a man named Greg Zamansky, alias Eric Samuelson, who is one of the agent provocateurs that we'll be discussing tonight, part of a larger group that is, according to the evidence that the three people on this program tonight are looking at, it implicates largely at the top Ted Gunderson. And above that, it, it implicates the Bush, Cheney, Rove cartel. And, of course, beyond that, the old money in Europe, the Rothschild League of Banksters. But the reality of the Illuminati's control over we the people through all of the methods of deception and weapons of mass destruction, that control ultimately has to filter down to the grassroots whereby we the people make choices for ourselves and our family, our loved ones and our communities and ultimately our nation, and that if we can't understand what is happening, if we can't pierce this veil of insanity and hypocrisy and criminality, if we can't diagnose, that means to see through to the root of the disorder, then we can't effectively treat it. We can't go on, we can't prevent it, we can't move to where 
the calling of 528 love, peace on earth, shall ultimately take us, according to the prophets and the prophecies and the way I feel that it is unfolding right now, in a blessed way. So, again, for those of you who have uh, a, a uncomfortable sense when we deal with the darkness, I've got to tell you, as I mentioned to these wonderful customers of HealthyWorldStore.com this week, I called them personally and I said, you know, I appreciate your support. I appreciate the products that you buy in the store that keeps our ministry going. But I have to tell you that our ministry is very special. It deals with the world's worst news, the most horrific realities that we need to <coughs> light of love and truth into. But it also deals with the world's greatest news. And that's why when you receive the newsletters and why I urge you everyone tonight to get on HealthyWorldStore.com and sign up for the newsletter because we'll have this information discussed tonight in a wonderful newsletter in advance of the conspiracy conference also that we are preparing for and looking forward to, whereby, in my humble opinion, Sherry Kane is going to pull the carpet out, as she's already doing, from underneath the entire conspiracy industry. And let the chips fall where they may, those people who are the enemies of tonight's guest and ourselves that set us up, that harass us, that libel and slander us, these people shall have to account for their covert operations and their satanic ideologies. So let's get on and introduce our guest tonight, Sherry, please. Hello, Barbara. Thank you for being with us. Oh, well, thanks for having me. I'm very happy to be here. So, everybody, we have Barbara Hartwell. Um, she is an amazing writer and a journalist, and she has been dealing with these same group of people who have contacted us and threatened us and put Dr. Horowitz on a fake Knights of Malta list, and they've been harassing her for years. So... Barbara, um, tell everybody out there about your experiences with these people and how you came to know them and how they came into okay. your life. All right. Well, first I should say that I got out of CIA in 1994, and I was in there for 25 years of my adult life. Uh, so it was a long time, and it, it took me a lot to get out. I had to fight my way out uh, from these people. And that they truly are evil. <laughs> so anyway, it, it, it come to 1997, uh, I went out for my first real big public speaking engagement in which I was going to start exposing something to a large audience, and that was the Global Sciences Congress in Denver. In uh, <clears throat> I believe it was August of 1997. That was it. And that's where I met Ted Gunderson. Now, there was a very bizarre set of circumstances connected to meeting Ted Gunderson. I'm sure, looking back on it, that it was a setup. I mean, from, from the beginning, uh, the conference organizer had said to me, I was invited sort of at the last minute, you know, and I was the so-called mystery speaker, the mystery guest. But they told me that uh, my speaking slot would depend on somebody named Ted Gunderson, who, whom I've ne never had heard of at that time, never never heard of him. And so anyway, uh, he was mentioned like right up front. And then I go there, and I meet Ted Gunderson, and at first I thought, oh, what a wonderful person. You know, here's, he's this uh, former FBI agent, and he's exposing the, the government corruption, and he's a very charming man. You know, he can be. So, uh, you know, I was taken in. I was taken in. Are you there? Thank yeah, you know, I was taken in too, Barbara. I considered <laughs> Ted the same exact way my experience of him, a very charming man, very nice man, kind of like a warm, fuzzy kind of <laughs> a teddy bear character that I always yep. enjoy seeing and hugging and saying, how you been, and, you know, just spending at least five or ten minutes with Ted catching up. And I and uh, man, oh man, I couldn't believe it 
when I learned that Greg Szymanski, who was the forger, mm -hmm. ended up being this uh, person connected through a network of agent provocateurs, CIA, FBI, COINTEL Pro agent provocateurs, whereby they were virtually all reporting to Gunderson. When I first told Well, that, that's right, yeah. And when I first told him, I said, you know, the person behind these people is Ted Gunderson. He said, no. I mean, he, he said, That's, that can't be, uh-uh. And I said, why? Because he's a really nice guy. No. And I said, I'm telling you. I said, I, I went and I realized who all these people were connected to and where they worked, and it comes down to Ted Gunderson. And he said, I, and I have never personally met Ted Gunderson, so I have no opinion of him at all. I don't even know. I didn't even know really who he was. And so I, and I said to him right away, do you know who Ted Gunderson is? And his, his answer to me was, no, I mean, I've met him before, but you can't say that he's behind. I said yes, and he was just <laughs> Okay, but let me, let me tell you something. Now, now, Len, you've known him. You must have known him at least since the same time that I did, around 97 or 98, right? I believe 96 was the first time I met him when, okay. when I came out. So with you the knew him before me then? Um, I probably met him at the beginning of me going on the lecture circuit in the American Patriot Network. I went to the first mm -hmm. meeting in 96 where I met Terry Reed, and I gave him a copy of the book Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola. And, man, I can't believe that I did that, now knowing all the operations about CIA and, and the way that yeah. the intelligence community operates. I virtually fed them with everything necessary yeah. to put me out of business, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true, but I, I'll tell you something about about Ted Gunderson. I, I believe, I think this is an important point, I believe the reason he's been so successful, aside from the fact that he was the head honcho, I call him the COINTEL pro kingpin, Ted Gunderson, but again, Ted has a tremendous amount of charm. Uh, you know, Ted broke my heart. He, he just broke my heart. Because I loved Ted as if he was like a father. I thought he was like a hero, you know. And uh, so, But anyway, I had to break off my association with him. I, I worked with him for almost three years. And finally, at the beginning of 2000, uh, I discovered some things that were very, very devastating to me. Some things that he was involved in and some of the things that his cronies were involved in. And in good conscience, I could no longer continue to have any association, not a friendship and not any kind of professional association. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was that he did that really bugged you? Oh, okay, well, you know, I am I have some trepidation. I, I can say this now. I have some trepidation about discussing some of this on the radio. I have written about it. The last time I tried to talk about it on the radio, uh, that's when I was thrown off, pulled the plug. Alex Jones pulled the plug on me. It wasn't Alex Jones' program. It was uh, Jeremy Floyd. And Alex Jones uh, and, pulled the program on Jeremy Floyd's show. Yes, this was in 2003. Uh, and I got on the, the program. <clears throat> okay, one of the things, I can talk about one of the things that that is... A little less hot, let me say it that way, is that... Barbara, you have, everyone's, both, permission. And Barbara, Barbara, you we, have everyone's permission, including the network uh, director. This is an alternative this is, radio uh, this station. Is, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you see, we have... Uh, okay. BTS Radio um, is mm -hmm. associated with folks who don't mind at all. In fact, they're committed uh, to having all the truth be told. And so please don't feel at all intimidated. And, uh, and my own personal feeling is, if not now, when? The truth, the full truth, nothing but the truth shall set us free. So we well, encourage... That's, no, that's true. I, no, I'm just concerned because of things that have happened in the past. Well, the first thing I can tell you is, is that <coughs> um, basically uh, something was revealed to me. You know, the Holy Spirit speaks to me, and I'm sure you understand that. Yes, um, we do. And a lot of the information that I get um, about bad guys, you know, about satanic bad guys and all those kind of people, um, I've always had the ability. I, I have gifts of the Spirit that God gave to me. And in any case, 
some information was revealed to me by the Holy Spirit after um, I heard, this is making me nervous now, <laughs> but anyway, um, in about 1999, let me go back a little bit, in about 1999, I believe it was, <clears throat> I was on a radio show, um, and it's called the uh, the Expert Witness Show. Have you heard of it with Mike Levine? 